Hello everybody and welcome back to Creation Myths. Today's Creation Myth has to do with one of my all-time favorite experiments. We're going to talk about the Lenski LTEE SIT Plus trait and the loss of regulation. Now this may sound familiar considering our last Creation Myth on lactase persistence and the loss of regulation. And you're right, it is kind of familiar. The reason for that is that creationists like to claim that it's hard to get new traits. And when you get new traits, they're actually not new, new, they're actually a loss of function in some way. So there's a number of specific claims that kind of follow this pattern. This is one of them. So what are we talking about right here? We are talking about the Lenski Long-Term Evolution Experiment, or LTEE. This is a fantastic experiment. It's run by Dr. Richard Lenski. It's been going since 1988, and the concept is pretty simple. We have 12 lines of E. coli, and they're grown in these glass flasks, and you can see right here, each of these has a liquid culture in which E. coli bacteria are growing. And these 12 lines of E. coli have been growing since 1988. So each day, they put some E. coli from the previous generation into a flask with the growth medium. It grows up over the course of the day. At some point during the day, they actually run out of food in the flask, which means the E. coli are competing with each other. So you're imposing a selective pressure. And over the course of the last 30 plus years, we've been documenting the evolution of these 12 lines of E. coli in real time. And we found some really cool stuff. And when I say we, I mean the people doing the experiment, but more broadly, I mean the scientific community. So the part of this experiment that we are going to talk about today is the SIT plus trait. So a little bit of background on E. coli is they can use a material called citrate as food, but they can only do it anaerobically. That is when there is no oxygen in the environment. Now, one of the Lenski lines, uh, one of the 12, evolved aerobic citrate metabolism. We call this the SIT plus trait. This was noticed when one of those 12 lines spiked in terms of its population density. And the way they found this was they measure what's called the optical density. It's basically just how cloudy is the solution. The higher the population density of the cells, the cloudier the solution is. And you can see in this figure that this happened right around generation 33,000 in the experiment. So we've got OD, optical density here, and you've got generations from 30 to 35,000. And you can see right here, it spikes you have that increase in optical density. That occurred because this particular line, one out of the 12, evolved the ability to use citrate in the growth medium as a food source. So they weren't limited to just the glucose they were given. They had another food source in that growth medium, which meant they could grow to a higher density. Now, obviously, the mutations involved in this trait are beneficial, right? You go from being limited to having a higher limit. That population can grow to a higher density, obviously a beneficial trait. And this is a problem for creationists because it turns out, and I've talked about this in some other videos that I'll link down below, like when I talked to Dr. Michael Behe, this trait meets Behe's criteria for an irreducibly complex biochemical trait. So creationists need a way to explain away what's going on here with this SIT plus trait. So the claim that creationists make to explain away the significance of this SIT plus trait is they say that is due to the duplication of an aerobically active promoter, a promoter that is active in the presence of oxygen. So a promoter is the piece in the DNA, it's the region in the DNA that sits just upstream of a gene, and it's the on-off switch for that gene. I'm oversimplifying, but that's basically what the promoter is. So what creationists say is, well, a promoter from somewhere else was duplicated. It landed upstream of one of the relevant genes here, like the critical genes called SIT-T. So you broke the existing regulatory scheme for SIT-T. You added this new promoter there, disrupted its ability to be regulated. It was expressed all the time, like when there was oxygen present, and that leads to aerobic citrate metabolism. So looking at this schematically, here's kind of the layout in the genome that we see. So you've got another gene called SIT-G, and then just beyond that, you have this SIT-T gene. This is the ancestral state. And then what creationists claim happen is you have a promoter that gets duplicated, and it lands just upstream of SIT-T. That's the new copy of the promoter. 
and it makes this T gene active in the presence of oxygen, in effect overriding the existing regulatory framework that governs when this sit t gene is active so you had something that was regulated in a certain way you have this promoter duplication and now it's unregulated in that way you've broken the regulation in other words sit t uh, the sit plus trait is due to the loss of the ability to regulate sit t expression right so we're talking about a loss of function here that's the creationist claim now, lest you think I am being unfair or ungenerous to creationists here, here is a screenshot from my conversation with Dr. James Carter, which I will link below. Uh, that's Dr. James Carter from Loma Linda University, in which he made the exact claim I am describing. So he says a duplication event copied a gene regulatory region, promoter, and placed it in front of the citrate transporter gene. Sit T, which is normally under the control of gene suppression in the presence of oxygen. This is a loss of function mutation since it involves a loss of gene regulation. Dr. Michael Behe, when he had a conversation with me, which I will also link down below, made almost the exact same claim. In fact, what he said it was a promoter relocation. So this is not some fringe claim that random creationists on the internet are making. This, this is from Dr. James Carter, Dr. Michael Behe. These are legitimate people that have legitimate PhDs that are creation scientists, or Michael Behe wouldn't like to be called that, but we're ID is creationism. So this is the creationist claim when it comes to SIT+. So why is this wrong? Well, it's wrong because just factually, they're wrong. What happens to get that SIT plus trait is that the SIT T gene itself is duplicated not a promoter. And we could see that right here. This is from a paper by one of the people that was kind of really digging into this. So this figure, there's a lot going on. So just follow me through this. Here, I showed you this before with SIT-G and SIT-T. And then we have some other genes here that are upstream. This region in this bracket right here, that's the region that gets duplicated. And it's called a tandem duplication. So you end up with this region and then you just copy it right next to where it was. So if you, you start right here with this, this tail end of the sit G gene, and it ends up right in here in the middle of the RNK gene, okay? So the new situation, right, the derived form of this part of the E. coli genome in the sit plus line is where you have your, your ancestral region right here, your original copy of sit T, and then you have a duplicated region right here, right after it, immediately downstream. Now, the important thing to note right here is it's this promoter right here, this arrow right there. That's the location of the promoter that is now going to control the expression of that new copy of SIT-T. Well, that promoter right there, that promoter is expressed, it's active when there is oxygen present. It's an aerobic promoter. This means that the new copy of SIT-T is going to be expressed in the presence of oxygen. The old copy of SIT-T is still going to be expressed only under anaerobic conditions. So this is one of the major steps that is required for aerobic citrate metabolism. It's not the only step that's required. You can dig into this paper and others, and there's other things, there are other mutations that are required to be citrate plus. But this is the main thing, duplicating that SIT-T transporter into an aerobically controlled region. Creationists are just factually wrong when they say a promoter moves and breaks the ability to regulate SIT-T. Nothing about that original SIT-T is broken. You're just making a second copy of it that's operating under a different regulatory scheme. Now, why does this matter? Because it undercuts a major creationist argument. And for some examples of that, let's go to, first, Dr. Jason Lyle. He says in this presentation, which I will link below, all point mutations that have been studied on the molecular level turn out to reduce the genetic information and not to increase it. He's quoting a book called Not By Chance. He goes on to say, not even one mutation, one, has been observed that adds a little information to the genome. 
And we could also look uh, towards Dr. Kevin Anderson, another creation scientist, and I believe a biochemist or microbiologist, I think, microbiologist, I think. He writes, beneficial mutations do not exist. Beneficial outcomes of mutations in specific environments do exist. Mutations only alter current genetic information, never observed to add genetic information. These are the broad 30,000 foot view creationist arguments. You can't get anything new. You can get in the small scale, you can get beneficial things, but ultimately they all come down to breaking something. They have an ultimate cost, which can't actually generate some new trait. Well, the Lensky sit plus line shows that that is just wrong. We have a new biochemical trait that doesn't cost you anything. It is a net plus without the loss of any other functionality or regulation. So is it true that we can never get a truly beneficial mutation or add genetic information? Nope, that's just not true. And that's the big takeaway here. This one small example invalidates this very large creationist argument. So to summarize, creationists often claim the long-term evolution experiment SIT plus line is due to a promoter duplication and a loss of regulation for SIT-T. The actual mechanism is a duplication of SIT-T into a new region. There's no promoter duplication and there's no loss of the ability to repress the original copy of SIT-T. The more important takeaway here is that this is a direct refutation of the broader creationist argument that there are no truly beneficial mutations, that they're all reductive, and that they cannot generate new information. So, SIT plus and the loss of regulation, that is a creation myth. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Don't get fooled.